Mega Man Legends. This was the first open world Mega Man game that hit the market back in 1997 for the PlayStation. This game was remarkable and stood out from all the other Mega Man games because of just how it played. Venture into a 3D world. What's more, the game gave you, the player, control over Mega Man's choices. To a degree. From funny names to insulting artists, you can make him a saint or a jerk. However, there were times in the game where choices could not be made. Even when the game had prime moments that would make you think you could. That limitation is where this video stems from. Going bad was only a small part of the game. But what would it have been like? And how would potentially things have played out if you could join the Bond? I swear this treasure will be ours or my name's not Bond! Let's do it! So what if Mega Man could join the Bonds? On the outside, that question's kind of silly, because once you factor in who Mega Man Volnet is, it can never truly happen. Maybe so. I mean, after all, he does help out Tron here and there, and the game does make a small joke about you joining the Bond as uh, Serverbot number 42. And in Mega Man Legends, there is a good and evil scale that affects you in various ways. Being too bad will make things more expensive and give you this really cool dark armor. But then at the same time, people just won't talk to you. But how do you get this way? You gotta perform some, uh, questionable actions. You know, stealing drinks and destroying vending machines. Just kick some cans around. Go abuse some pigs. Or say, the famous one that everyone knows, stealing a trunk of cash. There's a few more actions, but you get the idea. None of these actions are what we're led to believe what Volna is actually like, but hey, you can do them. You can also lie about your name, completely fool some nice lady who just wants to thank you. And then there's an artist, you can go up to her, tell her that her pain needs some talent. Something's missing. What do you think I should add? Huh? What did you just say? Did you just say what I think you said? Would you repeat that? That's what I thought. Never mind then. So really, just for gameplay sakes, Volnet's really only as good as you make him. But with this option, there's always comes a choice to be made. In Mega Man Legends 2, there is one specific cutscene that would have been the perfect opportunity to offer a variation to the story. In Legends 2, early in the game, you get to go to Mond Island. And upon landing, you discover Tron Bon is there with her little Lego minions terrorizing the village. Most likely looking for the same item you are in the ruins. Nothing about this is really out of the ordinary for Legends, but Tron pulls some shenanigans with Bonus Radio that casts some doubt on him about Roll. In fact, part of the exchange is even Tron and not Roll going so far as to talk about which of them really wants Walnut told you. Don't worry about me. You don't need to come back. You could team up with Tron. Uh, roll? What? I don't want him either. Well, maybe. If he gets on his hands and knees and begs me, I might consider it. You really don't care if I have him? Me? No, not at all. Talk about feeling like a loser. No, Paula just kind of stands there looking dejected and then the fight starts. But what if, for a moment, you know, one of those legend's choices popped up and you either fought Tron or could join her? How would this affect the game in terms of the story? That's exactly what I'm about to dive into. Volna here joining the Bonds may be extremely weird given that he's the hero and they're just a group of pirates, but hey, the idea actually did pass through the dev's head at some point because in Rockman-2 Episode 1, which is a demo that comes with the misadventures of Tron Bon in Japan, this option is presented for a very short moment. Volna then quickly brushes off the idea and tells Tron no way.
The key point here with this demo is that the option was present. Even though it doesn't matter and the game resets it for you, they do present you with the option. Why they didn't include this option in the final game is beyond me. But either way, let's continue. During the fight with Tron, or rather in this scenario, before the fight, you decide that Mega Man is going to join her, thinking that Roll has been playing him for some time now. At this point, the game would, most likely, progress as normal, you know, except for fighting Tron, and uh, this event would then automatically set you to the evil status, the dark, your armor would darken, people are going to be nasty to you, uh, it would just automatically set you to that, just like grabbing the trunk in Legends 1. As well, this event would automatically set Roll to be on bad terms with you, which is another kind of hidden element in Legends 2 that they have, where if you're nice to Roll, your upgrades are cheaper, and if you're mean to Roll, she gives you a little bit of an increase on your prices. So from here on out, you'd have Tron spotting you rather than Roll, which kind of makes sense because Tron has done some spotting for the server bots before in Misadventures of Tron Bond, and you know, as well, she does spot Volna kind of later on in the game. Weapons aren't even scratching him! Don't you quit on me now, Mega Man! If you lose, you'll have to enter to me! Come on, Mega Man! If you win, I'll buy you dinner! Take this! You know, Volna would then make his way into the Monda Ruins and, you know, have a normal run through there. Maybe have some different dialogue for Bola, because he doesn't know you're working with the pirates and you don't know Bola's working with the other pirates. You know, there's a big little alliance going on. The treasure we've been looking for is in there! Alright! We've got what we came for! Good job! But then when you get done, you beat the frog, you get the key, you know, instead of returning to Flutter, you make your way over to one of the Bond's small Drache ships, and it would take you to wherever the Bonds have, you know, set up a base. Which, they have to have someplace, because they keep building giant mechs, and the Gessel shaft is gone, so where are they building them? And, you know, Tiesel even mentions that they're running the department shop. Somewhere. Ugh. I just can't believe we don't even have enough money left to get new stock for the store! I guess I have to face facts. We'll have to close shop. And here I thought maybe we'd be able to walk the straight and narrow for once. And it's not like they can't put a base anywhere. There's a lot of extra space on the map. You know, what's what's one more map that you go to instead of going to the flutter to run around? You get to go run around the bond base, talk to some server bots. You know, I mean, I'm sure not all 41 of them are going to be running around there, but they could have a couple here or there that you could just go talk to, like... Maybe, you know, there's one who's in the R&D lab, like maybe Serverbot 2 or Serverbot 31. You know, they can develop you your weapon, so that way you're, you're still not locked out of gameplay. You still have something going forward. You know, maybe you could even go talk to Serverbot 35 and he could paint your armor to be like the Bonds and have the cool, like, skull shoulder pieces. I mean, that'd be pretty cool, right? Either way, Tron or a server bot would be an easy tie-in, you know, to get your gear made. And Data, he may or may not tag along with you on this one. Uh, it would kind of just depend on what the developers felt like doing. Uh, an option that they could do, though, instead of having Data tag along, let's say he goes back to the Flutter and hangs out with Roll, they could have a server bot be your new little save buddy, your little repair buddy, just like Data was. And to signify him as the one that helps you, it could be a server bot 41 who has a special blue helmet, or it could be the favorite server bot, which would be any number that could be in the lineup there, and he would just have the red helmet. So Tron would obviously be on board with Volnut joining the team, and the server bots seem to like him based on the letters that they send him. Vaughn, kind of hard to tell with Vaughn, can't really understand him, and he doesn't speak up a whole lot. Probably okay if everyone else is, but that leads us to one more. Tiesel Bond, the leader of the Bond family. He's not exactly fond of our hero, and I'd say it's fair. You know, he wouldn't like him coming on board. 
However, Tiso also knows that Voland is strong and an accomplished digger. As someone who's always in need of money, Tiso would likely plan to use Volnut to go dig up rare expensive items to sell. There's no doubt he'd let old Blue Boy stay. Drawn. Once he finds the treasure, we'll wait for our chance and take it from him. What? You didn't think I was going to just walk away, did you? Not. Now that's the Teasel I know! You bet it is! Old Teasel never gives up! I'll get that treasure sooner or later, one way or the other! So as I said earlier, Teasel does mention that they have a general store. Maybe this base will have the general store somewhere? And you can go there and serve about 14 as running it? And go sell a couple of things to him that you find in ruins? Maybe refractors, like refractor, you know, A or S or B. Sell that to them, sell some buster parts, sell some armor parts. Anything you need to sell, you just go there and sell. Because most likely, if you were to go to a general store in any of the other towns, they would freak out because you're a pirate and shoo you away. Normally in the game, after the Manda Ruins, you head over to Nino Island and focus on helping them over there deal with the Bond's usual rival pirate, Clyde and his minions of bird bots. Now, it wouldn't really make much sense for you to head over to Nino Island because you're a pirate and the Guildmaster's gonna fight you and he's not gonna open the ruins. It's gonna be a big ol' issue. Plus, that whole event has you, you know, taking on Glide, destroying his base. And Glide's kind of your ally right now, you know, with the whole alliance that they all got going on. So, it wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense for you to go over to Nino Island. Instead, during the time when Glide is doing his attack on Nino Island, the Bonds are clearly over in Kitoma City, taking it over and trying to get the third key. This is where the game would actually sequence break. So you'd head over to Salkata next. Being as the game itself has difficulty spikes depending on your digger rank, it isn't exactly out of line to say that the game could kind of adjust based on where you are right now. You know, the, the Reaver bots in this room may have a little bit of an HP decrease, and meanwhile the Nino Ruined ones could have a little bit of an increase to kind of offset where you're at in the game based on what path you took. Plus, beans as you know, you're evil and you can't take the mayor's quiz to get the beam blade. The only weapon you can really get in advance of play is Hunter Seeker, which is a great weapon, but you're not breaking the game by any means getting it early. So you head over to Salkata and rather than free the town, you'd actually get to fight the citizens and take over the town. It'd be cool, you know, you get to see the citizens fight back at you like, you know, they fought Tron in the Misadventures of Tron Bond. Like with Denise and her cool mech, or the police tank cars, or people just manning turrets and throwing bombs like server bots normally do. It could even be a last stronghold in the town where you get to take on a unique boss to this route. And once it's taken over, Tron and Bond would then probably head into the ruins and, you know, expecting you to shortly follow after. This would be a time where you could just run around like normal, and likely you could know, go take a visit to the junk shop which would have new items to buy and the owner would be really mad at you because, you know, you just kind of took over his town. And if you're anything like me, you'd definitely be taking time in this little event to go check out the new ruins that you can visit, which would be the S-rank ruins in the desert, and you'd be walking away with the Hunter Seeker, the fun little toy, and a bunch of zenny. The only problem with that is that ruin is flooded, and you're not able to breathe underwater unless you have to rebreather, which is an item you get in the Nino Island scenario. So you'd have to overcome that somehow. So just toss it in the shop. 1,000 zenny, boom. It's cheap, it's easy to get, and then maybe even before you go into the ruins, like, Tron will pop up on your radar and be like, Mega Man, that ruin's flooded! You can't breathe underwater! You just kind of leave it at that, and then you have to go figure out, how do I breathe underwater? So here, you're going to proceed through the main ruins like normal, until you get to the boss fight with Tron. Now, this is where the game would correct itself. Because at some point, the end of the game still has to happen. And for that to happen, you have to regroup with Roll to assist Blucher. So in order for that to make sense, during this dig, a malfunction happens on Tron's Gustav in the jamming, and Valnant's radio breaks. Therefore, Roll is able to reach him. You know, she maybe states something along the lines of she heard the bombs were attacking the city from Blucher and Beryl, and so, you know, she came to help. Anyway, after a conversation similar to the one on Monda Island after the Tron battle, Valnant rejoins the side of good, and bam, boss fight time with Tron. 
And from here, the rest of the runes will play out like normal. Bond stealing the key, you have to go chase him down, you know, and then you escape with the key. However, once you get out of the ruin, the town is still overrun by the Bond. So Tiesel will probably be waiting for you on the outside with his, you know, Blitzkrieg mech. And then once you exit the ruin, boom, you're going to trigger that boss fight with Tiesel. Once you take down Tiesel, the game of Prestige does the same as it usually does. Just now you can go to Nino Island instead and play out that scenario. Then you head back over to the Yasyanki for the final ruin in the Collide Bond Team Up Train Battle. Now, being as that covers your time with the Bonds, what would it offer you, the player, to choose that route rather than keeping it the same? Well, first, you do get to skip a boss fight. Tron's Crab, the Jagged Crab, which would then result in the Pokti Village not sustaining any damage. As well, it would offer you a different mission and boss fight in the Kotima Invasion. It would also instantly make you evil so that you could deal with the Shady Dealer in Kitoma sooner. So after dealing with the Shady Dealer and then going into the Kitoma Cavern Ruins, you would be able to walk away with the Crusher and the Hunter Seeker sooner. Whether or not that's worth it, that's up to you. There'd also be maybe some, you know, extra zenny to find here and there, and if you've ever, you know, tried to level Shining Laser, you know every zenny matters. Like, seriously, Tron was on point saying that roll for charges. You also get the Bond-themed armor, and I would say that could almost just be a special item that you could toggle on and off at your discretion. As well, after all things are said and done, it only makes sense that you would get a few more letters from Servobots on this route. You know, maybe one would send you letters saying that you're cool and you inspired him. He wants to be, you know, mega server bot. Or another who talks about how happy Tron was having you around and now she's like super sad. So what if Volna joined the Bonds? Well, in the end, not a whole lot. As no matter what the scenario is, it is in Volna's nature to return the roll data and barrel. They are his family. However, maybe this would be a good eye-opener for Volna to see things from the other side. He clearly doesn't hate the Bonds, and they're not really an evil group. They even want to get Volant off the moon and work with the good guys. Perhaps, if we ever do get a Legends 3, Capcom will open up the possibility here. After all, Bond and Tron were slated to be playable, among others, for Legends 2. Perhaps this very idea crossed their mind at some point. Uh, we'll never know until it happens, though. Thanks for watching my little what-if scenario here. If you have any ideas as to what could have changed in the game, please let me know in the comments below. As well, if you want to see more What If style videos, again, just let me know. Thanks again for watching and keep on rocking on!